Well, I've always uh, been into music since I was about four years old. So uh, I wanted to be a rock star after seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. I saw people, yeah, and I thought, well, that's for me. You know, I can't be a stripper. <laughs> so uh, I'll take that. Well, it worked for a little while, but uh, couldn't actually make a job and career out of it. So uh, here I am today. And, uh, but I am in a couple of movies with some great bands. Uh, Poison Idea and The Mentors. The Poison Idea documentary. Uh, Ear of Dysfunction, I think it is. I mean, that one that Mike Lastra made. It's a great movie. It's got Steve Hanford and Jerry A. and Tom Pig and Tom Roberts. Tom Roberts was a roadie. I met him at Mick Zane's house when I went to go over there to uh, buy some pot. And uh, he'd do the same thing. I kept trying to get into the band, but I was really a guitar player. And I had this uh, Univox hollow body, green, ugly bass, but it played great. And I just didn't have the equipment, so they always, you know, up in the air. There's always these guys that came over to try out that had all this really great gear, but they couldn't play. <laughs> anyway, they ended up taking me later on. But Tom who was uh, introduced to Mick Zane by Matt Rogers. He became our roadie, our flashpot guy. Because I bought these flashpots from a band called Jet. They were these meatloaf pants that you fill up with gunpowder. <laughs> and they hit the switch and poof. And uh, I had a small one. That's how my hair got burned off. <laughs> but these were like really cool. Made by Gizmo, the the roadie, and uh, well, we got all the gigs together. We got into punk rock at the same time, and uh, actually, I got into punk rock just as uh, before I was joined this band, which was all early metal. You know, early Judas Priest, Scorpions, Budgie, and so that's how I got introduced to the heavy metal scene before the eighties. By the time the 80s came around, I was kind of bored with it. But uh, anyway, uh, that's a good movie to go to pick up at Amazon or eBay. Uh, Poison Idea documentary, that's all you got to put in. And uh, tells a story about Poison Idea. And uh, Poison Idea was a legendary punk band from Portland, Oregon. And uh, Tom was a natural... Uh, <coughs> Tom was destined to play guitar. He uh, kept getting all these rare guitars he'd trade for the cocaine and marijuana he sold. And I'd go over to his house all the time and say, you should learn how to play these things, man. And you go, right, McCord? And I go, no, really, I'll show you. It's easy. And we were near the Ramones, and uh, one time when we went to a we were, we weren't 21 yet. Our birthdays were like two days apart. And we would have turned 21 just a couple of weeks from the state. But we bought tickets for the Ramones months in advance at uh, the Earth Tavern. And we show up to the gig, first in line, wait in line for hours. <laughs> Guess we're going to be in first. <laughs> and the guy says, ID, please. What? <laughs> They never told us it was an over-21 show. Go back to my house. Tom's got a case of low and brown beer. And he says, come on, Michael, we're going to call it a bomb threat into the gig. <laughs> Today, they would have had the FBI at the house. But uh, <laughs> that was funny. A lot of weird things happened. When I was at Tom's house, one time, yeah, in Portland, and there, and there was this air jet plane that either ran out of fuel or it crashed into a neighborhood. It was like a 737, 707 or whatever. A big, you know, passenger jet. <laughs> Tom lives on 148th and Burnside. The jet crashed about five blocks up right after I left. <laughs> I got home and the news was on and a plane had crashed 
into that neighborhood. And uh, there was no cell phones back then. And you couldn't call because the phones ran on electricity. <laughs> so uh, I couldn't call him and find out what the deal was. Those were the days when he had a fridge full of old English quartz. And I met Tom when he was a skinny kid. And uh, later on, he became Prince of Pastry when he played. I introduced, I introduced a bunch of guys to him, like Steve Hanford, because I knew they would hit it off, and my friend Eric Frey, uh, another guy I got into punk rock with before I joined the, the Mick Zane band. And uh, I thought, well, these guys will hit it off like a house on fire. Yeah. <coughs> <clears throat> so Eric uh, Eric could play drums and so he joined the band to, for Tom's first band I wrote Tom a, a paper by hand on how to write the, how to play easy bar chords and notated all the frets so he could figure out you know what kind of gave him the whole concept of it he, he was a smart guy he figured it out, and boom, he was gone. And uh, later on, I had a I, Ibanez Iceman, and uh, I don't want to pull it out. Uh, Tom really liked my guitar. It's the one that's on the Ravers. I was a teenage rock and roller picture on the cover, and uh, he bought one. And I had a, <laughs> oh, God. I had a 1963 Fender Jazz Bass. I don't know where I got it, but I bought it on the cheap. <laughs> so I thought, well, oh, hey, you know, Getty Lee made a teardrop bass. I'm going to cut the horn off. So I cut the top horn off, ruining the bass. <laughs> it still played, but uh, uh, Tom decided to cut the bottom horn of the Iceman off. And put a DiMarzio Super Distortion pickup in it, like I had. And uh, that was his main guitar forever. But, uh, yeah, yeah all, all this stuff is in the Poison Idea documentary and uh, made by Smegma Studios. And uh, I suggest you pick it up. I'm Matt McCourt for U.S. Metal TV.